Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Temptations Ballad. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. Please sit back and enjoy while I entertain you for the next 18 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm Shan, you're up, and let's go. Alright, <clears throat> here we go. Okay. Heesh, what's this guy's deal? It's a long story. His dad used to have beef with my papa back in the day. And still do. For 20 long years, my father, the city watch sheriff before me, worked to bring Marrow Bonebreaker to justice. Alas, that accursed band had escaped the law and stayed just beyond my father's reach. Why the royal family chose to pardon you damn Bonebreakers is beyond me. But now, I will do what my father could not. Father may have failed to imprison Marrow Bonebreaker, but I sure as hell am going to succeed in arresting you. Jeez, Wes, you gotta chill this family feud stuff. Just admit it, adventurers are driving the city watch out of business because we can basically do your job, but better. And so you have nothing better to do than to chase after me. Wes growled and furiously stomped his feet. Not in your wildest dreams. The city watch is still a noble and essential part of the city, especially with crooks like you around. Cole rolled his eyes and pretended not to hear him. You know, Wes, the last time you caught me for public indecency, you watched and waited a long time before arresting me. Could it be that you're just a big... <laughs> Absolutely not! Wes's hat almost toppled off his head as he stumbled backwards, his face flushed red. I ain't listening to any more of your nonsense. I got work to do. Have fun rotting in jail, bone breaker. And with that, the sheriff stomped down the hall and left them alone in their cold prison cell. Cole sighed and rubbed his temples. He turned towards Sid, who was glancing down at his boss aimlessly like a lost lamb. Well then, now that the knucklehead sheriff is out of the way, let's figure out what to do from here. This day certainly doesn't, didn't go the way I imagined. Same here. I was hoping for some excitement, but I'd rather stay out of jail. Any chance they'd let us out? Don't worry. Wes is kind of an idiot. I'm sure there's a way to worm, worm ourselves out of here. Cole, Cole plopped onto the cold stone floor and groaned. More importantly, we're probably not getting paid by the shopkeeper for wrecking his store. What am I supposed to tell Papa now? I promised him I'd finish a job and bring some loot home. That's what you're worried about? Of course, this entire reason is why I performed this darn adventuring party in the first place. But what about doing heroic deeds and making the world a better place? I'll leave that for people who actually care. Hmm? Panic sobs echoed through the damp air of the cell. Cole glanced towards a corner where the young knight was curled up in an anxious ball and pulling out her own hair feverishly. Mother will be furious at getting arrested mere hours after stepping out of the cathedral. I truly am the worst. Her words were interrupted by painful, ragged gasps for air as she attempted to steady herself. The young knight's entire frame trembled as anxiety loomed over her. Hey, it's no big deal. People get arrested all the time. That's not very comforting, boss. Did she even hear me? Gee, she's really out of it. Of course not. She's having a panic attack. Sid rushed over to place a comforting arm over the panicking knight. She barely even noticed him as she continued wheezing for breath. Hey, everything's going to be alright. Just focus on breathing. Nice and easy there. Telling someone to take deep breaths of dank jail air isn't exactly comforting either. Ugh, she's crying even harder now. I can't deal with crying people. Cole took a step back and raised his arms. Suddenly, gentle wisps of light sparked from his fingertips. Nice! Prestidigitation. The dark, I mean, the dark stone room suddenly filled with a pleasant spring breeze, tinged with the sweet scent of lemon tea. Fresh, fresh, cool air caressed their fur with a leisurely rhythm as the damp smell of the prison disappeared completely. Whoa! What kind of spell was that? It was the air freshener spell? That disgusting gel gel smell, smell is gone. Cole shrugged and tried not to appear overly proud. It's just a nifty spell for minor parlor tricks. Igniter, snuff out candles, create minor sensory illusions, clean our soil, objects, blah blah blah. Usually I use it to cheat during card games, but it's pretty useful for other stuff too. Cole crouched down next to the knight and gently rubbed circles on her back. There, there. Deep breaths, girl. I know the dungeon is a depressing place, but it's not the end of the world. Wes has tried to arrest me like 27 times already, and I've gotten out every time. Cheer up, we're all gonna be fine. It took a few more minutes of quiet sniffling and gentle words, but the young knight's breathing eventually returned to normal. She sniffled and wiped her tearful eyes with a shaky arm. 
No. Th thank you, kind sir. S sorry for my lack of composure. Um, and ap my apologies for indirectly destroying your wagon earlier. If I had been more vigilant... Now you're just being too... Nah, now you're just being too honest. See, what you should have done is put all the blame on that shitty cat who stole your stuff and then flex your status as a knight. You might have even avoided getting arrested. But that would be lying, or at the very least dishonorable. I undoubtedly share some of the responsibility. Not lying, finessing the truth. You should try it sometime. It saves you a lot of pain in life. And both the knight and Sid stared at him doubtfully. Plus, I gotta say, all your advice is kinda iffy. My words are full of wisdom from years of experience, thank you very much. You'll understand when you're older. He turned towards the young knight with a grin. And by the way, the name's Cole, and this is my lackey, Sid. It's a pleasure sharing a jail cell with you. The young knight scrambled to stand up and bowed deeply. It's an honor to meet you as well, Sir Cole and Sir Sid. My name is Artemy Johanna Gaultier, a fledgling knight of the church. Sid's jaws nearly dropped to the floor. Wait a second. You're Artemy Gaultier? The, the creator's chosen? That is correct. Though I am unsure if I am worthy of such a title. Dude, you don't actually believe in all this chosen one church nonsense, do you? It's all true, though. All the bards sing about how the creator has chosen heroes throughout history to save the world from horrible stuff. I can't believe it. It's an honor to meet you, ma'am. This is amazing. Artemy flushed and scratched her head bashfully. Thank you for the kind words, Sir Sid. You are quite the flatterer. Bah! What's so great about that? The fact, the fact that you're here just means something world-shakingly terrible is going to happen within our lifetime. Now you're telling me this salving baby is supposed to save us from it? Artemy flinched and hung her head low in shame. Boss, we really need to work on your sense of tact. No, Sir Cole is correct. I'm not exactly a model of example of a knight, and much less of the creator's chosen. But today has been one big disaster. So, what's your whole deal? Did that little shit screw over your delivery job, too? That is somewhat true. I was tasked with my first mission today on behalf of the church. I was to deliver this beautiful obsidian crown encrusted with four gorgeous rubies to his highness at the royal palace. But... That little thief stole the crown? Artemy grimaced and sniffled again. I... I've shamed myself this day. The church will be most displeased. And now his highness will be much happier. Ugh, let's... My first mission outside the church district, and I botched it immediately! Cole snapped his fingers impatiently. Don't go crying on me again, stay focused. So that little shit stole a priceless jeweled crown from, a, from the royal family. I'd imagine they'd be pretty grateful if we managed to recover it, and they're certainly rich enough to reward us generously. I suppose so. They're the rulers of Axia, after all. I've never had the opportunity to interact with the royal family before. Especially now since the prince is the only one, only surviving member. Excellent. Then it's decided. Sid and I are going to help you recover your missing crown. Huh? We are? Our delivery job is ruined, anyhow. As proper responsible adventurers, we might as well help out this poor lost knight with her task. Out of the kindness of our hearts, of course. This might be a good chance to recover those arcane crystals that the kid stole, too. I gotta keep my little adventuring party from sullying Papa's reputation. Yes! Oh, what? Finally! A good and proper adventuring mission! I've been waiting for something like this all day! Sid's enthusiasm faltered slightly as he gave it some thought. But, uh, boss? How are we supposed to catch that thief kid? He ran away hours ago. Before that little shit wrecked our wagon, he mentioned selling his stolen goods to someone named Clyde. Luckily for us, I think I know exactly who he's talking about. As a son of Marrow Bonebreaker, you get to know a lot of shady people. Cole turned to Artemy with a grin. We're gonna get your crown back by the end of the day, Missy. I guarantee it. Thank you s thank you so much for your guide, Sir Cole. I am sincerely in your debt. To think the people outside of the church district would be so kind. Well, not to rain on your parade or anything, but we're all still stuck in jail. I don't think we're gonna get much done as long as we're stuck here. Not for long, we aren't. Cole sauntered up to their cell door and abruptly stuck his hand inside his loincloth. But boss, what are you doing? Right in front of a lady? S Sir Cole, this is highly inappropriate. Cole sent them both a, both a withering glare as he rummaged through his loincloth and pulled out a small toothpick. Small lockpick, okay. Will y'all relax? Wes gave me a thorough pat down before throwing us in here. I had to hide my goods somewhere. You stuff a lockpick in your loincloth? 
I've got pockets everywhere on this little thing. One advantage of wearing basically nothing is the fact that the city watch can't pat me down without feeling real awkward. I'm pretty sure Wes had fun filling me up, though. Sir Cole, your methods are quite questionable. Cole winked as he stuck his, his, stuck his lockpick into the keyhole and began tinkering away. Hey, as long as it works. Clank! Thumble, thumble, dink. Cole grimaced and retracted his lockpick. Hmm. Well, this throws a prickle, a prickle. What is a prickle? A prickle into my plans. What appears to be the issue? Uh, Wes might have upgraded to a more complex and expensive lock. I can't make heads or tails of this thing. Does that mean we can't get out of here? Cole sighed and stuffed his lockpick into a pocket of his waistband. Not necessarily. As I like to say, if you can't force your way out, people your way out. I've got a little backup plan. Cole took a step back, peering around the cold cell walls thoughtfully. He turned toward his two companions with a grin. I'm gonna lure Wes into the cell. After he unlocks the door, I'll need Sid to knock him out. You want me to attack the sheriff? That's quite illegal! Listen, this is what being an adventurer is all about. We wreck and destroy stuff wherever we go and somehow leave the place better than it was. What do you think it what do you think is worse? Assaulting one measly sheriff or the fact that Wes inconveniences me whenever we meet? Assaulting the sheriff, Sir Cole! Sir Sid, you can't possibly comply with this! Ugh, figured the church knight would be all goody two shoes about this. Don't you want to recover that crown of yours? We don't have time to wait for the city watch to sort themselves out. If we waited too long, the trail to our thief will go cold. Well, when you put it that way... And, Sid, do you want to impress the marrow when you meet him? Or tell him that you're acting like a big spineless sissy? Of course not! I'm a capable adventurer who does what does what need to be, needs to be done! I just gotta hit the sheriff on the back of the head, right? I'll do it. Sir Sid, you mustn't be so easily swayed. Too late for takebacks. Let's set this plan in motion. Oh. Minor illusion. Cole snapped his fingers with a spark of magic. Oh, shit. Fire immediately erupted from every corner of the jail cell, alighting the dark room with a brilliant orange glow. Towers of flames flickered lazily in the cold air along with sparks of bright ember. Yep, everyone's freaking the fuck out. <laughs> Sir Cole, have you gone mad? C quick grab some water oh relax will you none of this fire is real it's all illusion magic it's basically the only kind of magic i know how to do huh, huh? sid cautiously crouched near a fire and gingerly waved a hand to the flame no heat just the constant chill of the stone prison air sid chuckled and stuck his entire hand in the fire while wiggling his fingers with glee the air shimmered with the wispy fog of illusion magic as the false flames danced around his danced <sighs> around his fingertips. Whoa, these are some neat tricks, boss. This is quite an impressive display of illusory spellcasting. Eh, not quite. It still needs a few finishing touches to be convincing. Uh-oh. Prestidigitation! More sparks erupted from Cole's fingertips. Suddenly, the cold jail cell was filled with a thick scent of smoke. The heavy scent flow slowly flowed out of their cell and down the stone court over the prison. That should get their attention. Now I just need y'all to make a ruckus. How good is your acting? Sid and Artemy paused before exchanging blank stares. Ugh, fine. Let me show you amateurs how it's done. Oh no. <gasps> Footsteps echoed through the stone walls as Wes made a mad dash towards their jail cell. What in the blazes is going on in here? I leave for one moment and the place smells like it's burning down. Holy shit! Wes's jaw dropped at the towering wall of fire that had erupted within the cell. Cole shook the bars of the cell desperately, his face a twist of panic and fear. Wes! Please help! Let us out! Well, what happened? How should I know? We were just chilling here and suddenly the place lit up! Did you set us up? What? Of course I didn't. I'm a good law-abiding sheriff. Right, and I'm sure all my arrests were legitimate. I knew you had it out for me, but I didn't know you hated me that much. I... You're a little shit, but I don't want you dead. Hold on, I'll get this door. Wes stumbled through the key ring in his pocket and frantically jammed it into the cell door. There, hurry up and... Ooh! <laughs> Sid awkwardly stood over Wes with a raised fist as he dropped to the floor like a sack of potatoes. Artemy glanced over his shoulder with an equally mortified expression. Cole just casually stepped over the unconscious sheriff and dusted himself off. Aw, he does care. 
This feels bad, right? I can feel the creator judging us in shame. That's such a cool animation. Cole, Cole scowled at them as he snapped his fingers, dismissing his illusory flames. Don't sympathize with this guy. He's been falsely arresting me for years. And didn't you admit that those public to those public public indecency charges, though? Cole waved his hands dismissively as he dragged Sid out of the cell. Details, details. Come on, let's hurry up and get out of here. A uh, night lady, are you coming or what? One moment, please. Artemy gently carried the sheriff's prone body to a nearby corner, propping him upright in a more comfortable position. There, much better. Sleeping with such uncomfortable posture is bad for one's health. I think a cramped neck is going to be the least of his worries when he wakes up. I hope he takes a small comfort in this anyhow. And it's mostly to ease my own conscience. Ugh, I hate working with goody two-shoes. Oh god, alright. To the Rotter Sister tickets? Oh! Uh, rot oh god, Rotten Red's Alley. Oh, that sounds like a pleasant place to be. Rotten Red's Alley, I guess, to uh, rap <laughs> Rapist Tom Junction, you know. The two worst places in the city. <laughs> After sneaking out of the city watch prison, Cole led his two new companions across the city to Rotten Red's Alley. Right next to Rapist Tom's Junction. <laughs> A seedy and lawless area, Rotten Red's Alley was rife with shady individuals and underground activities. Needless to say, Marrow took his son here for frequent visits on the weekends. I beg your pardon? You are saying that your father takes you to this unlawful corner of the city for fun? That's so utterly irresponsible! It's a pretty good time. One of my favorite gay bars is a few blocks from here. Things get pretty rowdy at No Pants Friday. <laughs> on no Pants Fridays. No Pants? What kind of bars are you going to, boss? Uh, the gay ones. And more importantly, Clyde's little business is around here, too. What exactly what kind of business does this Clyde character conduct? He's really fun. Clyde is an old is an old buddy of mine. He runs an underground fighting ring that Papa frequents whenever he gets the urge to kick the shit out of someone. I kind of get bored when Papa drags me there, though, so I usually just hang and chill with Clyde in his office. Uh, among other things. God, Cole, you banging your way through the fucking city? Jesus. Anyway, uh, Clyde's an active seller in the city's black market, too. People go to his ring to gamble on fights and check out his wares. That little street urchin thief was probably planning to pawn that crown and our stolen arcane crystals to Clyde for some quick money. Cole led the group towards a worn building in the corner of the alley. There was a thick wooden door with a small closed slot near the top, likely used to observe visitors. Some splatterings of orange and black paint marked the entrance like the stripes of a tiger. Muffled yells and thundering crashes echoed from within the building. Er, uh, uh, boss? Are you sure this is a good idea? This place is kind of creeping me out. Hmm, yeah, you're right. We can't just stroll into Clyde's Den for a pleasant chit-chat. They probably won't let us in for no reason. The ring is either for fighters or people betting on fights. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye